given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in your places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health for an update on the COVID-19 outbreak, which has resulted in three deaths at Daisy Hill Hospital. And uh, just before I call the Minister of Health, could I just thank both the Minister of Health and the Minister of Justice for being able to attend the chamber this afternoon, on, uh, notwithstanding the fact that there was an emergency executive meeting. So, thank you very much. So, Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I want to take this opportunity to provide the House. Uh, with an update on what is a very serious situation at Daisy Hill Hospital. As members will know, on Friday, the Southern Health and Social Care Trust confirmed that 11 patients and 21 staff connected with the male medical ward at Daisy Hill had tested positive for COVID-19, and that 67 staff contacts were off work and self-isolating. Mr Speaker, at that point, three of those patients who had tested positive had sadly passed away. And tragically, I can now inform members that over the weekend, a further two patients have sadly lost their lives. I want to again express my deepest sympathies to the families of those who have been plunged into grief in these particular difficult circumstances. Thorough investigations are absolutely essential, and I am determined that no stone will be left unturned to ascertain the facts about these cases and any learning that we can take to prevent further reoccurrence. The deaths, the deaths of patients along with the six deaths in the haematology ward at Craig Avenue Area Hospital will all be subject to a detailed review through the SAI process. That investigation will be independently chaired and its findings will be made public. And there's also a piece of work uh, connected to the learnings of these outbreaks that are being delivered across all trusts. My department and I are in regular contact with the Southern Trust, and I want to assure the public that all necessary measures are being taken, firstly, to control these outbreaks, and secondly, to investigate the circumstances that have caused them. I call Just McNulty, supplementary. I can thank the Minister for coming to the House today, and I welcome his confirmation that an investigation will now take place. I hope the Minister will join with me today in communicating a strong message that Daisy Hill Hospital is a first-rate hospital with a committed and dedicated staff. Five fam families are grieving. My thoughts and prayers are with those families. Minister, staff should not have to come to me. I hope the Minister will ensure that an appropriate mechanism will be put in place to, for staff to raise their concerns and for them to be listened to. Minister, I have a list of questions that patients, families and staff want answers to around testing protocols and delays, infection control, ward, deep cleaning, lessons that were not learned from Craig Avon. But, Minister, the overarching issue now is that staff, patients, their family and the wider community need to know that their hospital is safe and they will be safe when in hospital. What actions have been taken and what additional resources have been put in place to ensure that is the case? Can you reassure them today, Minister? Um, Mr. Speaker, um, in the specifics that the, the, the member has asked, I want to assure him, I want to assure the staff, and I want to assure the families that we will do all we can to ensure um, the support of the staff and of the patients and the loved ones, and that the support in their work and the daily challenges that he, he rightly acknowledges that the, the staff members um, face, they are supported because I think as the member is saying this now is not the point of a portion of blame. This is about taking those, taking those robust steps to ensure the future safeguarding of our staff and the patients in those vital hospital set settings, but also supporting the families who have lost loved ones um, at, at, at this critical juncture, because that support um, and provision and assurances and communication must be there, must be strengthened. Um, while the SAI uh, Level 3 investigation goes on, because it will take time, but they need those answers and those reassurances now. And that's why I and my department officials are in regular contact with, with the senior uh, leadership of the Trust as well. In regards to he mentions uh, cleaning as well. Uh, I've been informed by the Southern Trust that enhanced environmental cleaning has been taken on five times a day 
and then at the end of out this outbreak there will be a final terminal clean of all the facilities as well. I call Pam Cameron. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his uh, attendance uh, this evening on this very important matter. And of course our thoughts are with those five families and uh, indeed their friends who who have now uh, been um, de dealt into grief prematurely. Um, Minister, can you confirm if you will expedite, expedite as far as possible the timescale for the completion of the Serious Adverse Incident Review to help restore public confidence and implement stringent safety measures to protect staff and patients at Daisy Hill Hospital? Join with the, the Vice Chair of the Health Committee and, and sending those condolences to the family and friends of those, those who have lost, um, lost loved ones. In, in the past number of days. Uh, in regards to the serious adverse incident, I, I did say it was going to be at a level three, and I did commit to publishing the findings of it, because I, I do know that our SAI uh, process has been challenged in the past and to the validity, but I want to give the reassurance to this House and to the families and to the staff that we will, we will ensure that the answers are sought to the questions that are being asked. Um, the Chair will be in place, um, I, I am informed, by, by the 25th of September, which is, which is the, end of, the end of this week, to ensure that that process um, can, can, be, can be commenced. Um, the Southern Trust is not just working with the public health agency here, they are also working with Public Health England um, to ensure their management of the process of the highest standard and to assure that there is learning across the entirety of our health um, and social care system. Nicole Liz Kimmins. Corla, and again, thank the Minister for coming again this week um, in relation to this important issue. And I too have had quite a number of contacts over the last two weeks, I suppose, since this um, issue first arose in Daisy Hill. Um, and, and like others have said, uh, I've had very concerned patients, their families and staff regarding you know, um, their safety to be in hospital and also the safety of staff in the workplace. And I, I really welcome the reassurances, reassurances you have given here this evening. Um, but can I ask, Minister, because as, as the weeks have gone on, this has been a major issue. And when we hear uh, news like this around the COVID outbreak, it obviously raises concerns. Daisy Hill has been without ANE for six months now. And, and I have been liaising with the Trust uh, on many occasions and, and, and really appreciate those engagements. Can you give uh, confirmation today that this COVID outbreak will have no implication on the reopening of ANE um, in the next few weeks? You know, I, I thank the member for for a concern, but I'm reluctant to join the two the two incidents specifically together because I know the Southern Trust have given uh, specific timelines on opening the facility in Daisy Hill. It has been delayed. I think, and that has been communi communicated to to elected members. I haven't received any update that it will be delayed further. We have a number of staff who are currently off and self isolating, but they, that should complete within the 14-day period, so the new date should still be reinforced. But I'll check that with, with the Trust, and I'll get back to the member and other members who are participating in this debate to provide that reassurance or an update. Could I call Sinead Bradley? Um, I, too, would like to add my name to those condolences offered to all families who have lost loved ones uh, due to COVID-19. Can I welcome the Minister coming because I do think there are words of reassurance needed. And I ask the Minister specifically, can the Minister give an assurance to the patients, their families and the staff that all those areas in Daisy Hill Hospital that have been affected by COVID-19 have been subject to a deep clean under the instructions of the Public Health Infection Control. And could, I know he did mention a little bit towards the latter end of his statement, but if he could elaborate on that, please. And I, th I thank the member um, on the specific, because I know that I, I, I'm led to believe this afternoon that it is an issue that staff um, have raised. I'm seeking assurances from the PHA and the Trust uh, themselves, but what I have been informed that staff have carried out enhanced environmental cleaning five times a day in those areas, and at the end of the outbreak, which is determined by the Public Health Agency, there will be a final terminal clean as well. So I'll, I'll seek further reassurance from the Public Health Agency and also the Southern Trust as well to ensure that that is being done uh, to the extent that the PHA is requiring it's being done. I call Paula Bradshaw. 
Speaker. Um, thank you, Minister, for coming to the Chamber today. Um, are we getting to the point where some of the health services in this hospital might have to be moved to another neighbouring facility just to accommodate this? I suppose I'm, I'm concerned that some people may not turn up for appointments if they're, if they're concerned about the hygiene control in this location. Yeah. And I thank the member because she does make a very valid point, and I think it goes back to uh, Mr McNulty's su su supplementary in regards to how we reassure the public, uh, the patients that do have to prevent, pr present themselves, but also the staff. And I think it's a job of this House collectively to provide that reassurance and encouragement uh, to patients to come forward. If there are anyone, and I will say this, if there is anyone concerned that they should contact uh, those who are organising their appointments, whether it's the consultant or the doctors, to make sure that that reassurance can be provided at this point in time, I am not aware of the Southern Trust indicating that they want to relocate. Um, any services because of this outbreak, but again, I'll, I'll check now that the member has, has raised the issue because it is an important one. We need as many people presenting for medical treatment as is possible during this, th this current period uh, within the surges of, of COVID-19. call Alan Chambers. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Minister, hospitals, we all view hospitals as place of, of safety and, and recovery, and we probably don't expect to, uh, uh, for some of our loved ones to contact something like uh, COVID in that setting. Um, but, I mean, hospitals uh, do suffer from time to time with uh, infections, MRSA, gastric infections spring to mind. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily represent negligence uh, uh, on the part of anyone, but would the minister agree that it's impossible to completely exclude uh, infections in uh, hospitals, and can he assure the House that everyone involved has taken every step to mitigate against uh, this current infection uh, in Daisy Hill Hospital? And I thank the member, and, and, and again, I think the immediate priority in the Southern Trust, um, working with the public health agency here, and as I said, also in England, is to ensure that their management of this outbreak is to the highest standard and to share that learning across our health and social care system. I would also want to take this opportunity again to reassure the staff, those working through these unprecedented times um, in caring for the patients and the loved ones, that they are supported in their work and the daily challenges um, that they are presented with. Because, I, as I said earlier, and I think that this is not about apportioning blame, this is about uh, taking those robust steps to ensure um, the future safeguarding of our, our staff uh, and the patients currently in the hospital se in, our, in all our hospital settings, but also supporting the families as well. I call William Irwin. Mr. Speaker, and uh, can I thank the minister for coming to the house today uh, to answer our concerns? And again, can I add my thoughts and prayers to the families of those who have lost their lo loved ones in David Hill and indeed Craig Avenue hospitals in recent times. Given the level of staff loss, 21 staff, uh, you said, uh, is, has COVID, and 67 staff are isolating. Uh, how is this level of staff loss affecting the day-to-day -day running of the hospital? And the member will be aware, that under no doubt, with that level of staff absence, there are adverse effects, and there are certain services that are being stepped back, but the Trust is doing all that it can through reallocating staff and also the utilisation of agency staff to make sure that we can deliver as many services as is safely possible at this minute in time. But it's about making sure that we get those staff who have tested positive and those who are self-isolating um, supported during this period of self-isolation to make sure that we can get them back to work safely as well. Call John O'Dowd. Thank the Minister for his answers thus far. Minister, on the 7th of September, I asked an urgent oral to you in this chamber. And on that day, you said to me that you were going to establish a severe adverse incident in Craigavon Hospital. A chair would be appointed. On that day, there were four people that died as a result of the outbreak in the haematology ward in Craigavon. There's now six. There's five dead as a result of the outbreak in Daisy Hill. The severe adverse incident hasn't been established. The chair hasn't been appointed. Would the Minister not agree with me that time is not on our side and that he has said it is not the time to have a portion of blame? And I agree with him. But something has went wrong. It is either person, process, or equipment has let the, the system down. Mm -hmm. And unless we get this 
severe incident up and going and the investigation going, we won't know, which means this could be repeated somewhere else. The member did bring the urgent oral back and I know he has an adjournment debate um, tomorrow afternoon on, on, on this subject. In regards to the serious adverse incidents, the importance is about getting the right independent chair. As I said, that will be appointed, he, or they will be appointed uh, by the end of this week. What I also, also have asked um, is that the patient client council in my department also make sure there is a, a support mechanism uh, for the families and staff who have to interact with the serious adverse incident as well. There is ongoing work through the PHA, through their inspection processes, their engagement with the trust and with the staff to ensure that whatever learnings we need to do now are learnt now, because I think it's a matter of, of fact that the, the chair of the health committee has also raised these concerns as well. There, and the member's right, there's no point in waiting until the SAI is complete. It's about learning what we can do now. That's why the PHA is engaged with Public Health England, who have seen um, similar outbreaks and similar conditions in other hospitals um, across their jurisdiction, something that we did not see in the first wave. So there's learnings there to be brought across. We're implementing them now, and I can assure the member we're doing, and the Trust is doing, all that it physically can and all that it practically can to ensure that this doesn't happen again anywhere across Northern Ireland. Nicole Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I too would like to place on record my condolences to the families affected by this COVID-19 outbreak. And inevitably, like other members here, my attention turns also uh, to the staff and the staffing pressures and their ability to cope with what will come, hopefully, even with general winter pressures. Can the Minister provide an assessment of current health and social care workforce capacity within the Southern Trust in light of the COVID-19 outbreaks, and to outline what mitigations he will put in place to ensure uh, associated staffing absence does not adversely impact patient safety or provision of vital frontline services. Yeah, uh, and again, in response to the member, I don't have that specific detail of figures um, with me, but in, in, I, I'll ask him to reflect on the answer I gave to his party colleague, um, Mr Irwin, is about making sure that any provision of service that we deliver is done safely. Uh, so with that level of staff absence, uh, due to the self-isolation, which is the right thing uh, for the staff to do. There will be some downturn uh, in provision of service, but the Trust are doing all they can to ensure that that is minimal uh, and there is as little disruption as possible to the service delivery uh, in both the Craig Avenue and Daisy Hill Hospital sites. And I call Colm Gilderney. And I would like to thank the Minister for coming and for his answers, um, and in particular the answer in relation to rapid learning. But given the bereavements that we have seen, and, and I extend my condolences to every one of the families impacted, can the Minister outline what uh, specific bereavement support and guidance has been put in, both for those who have lost loved ones, but also for people who are, are continuing to experience the impact of the disease? Uh, their loved ones also need support. Could the minister outline any steps? And again, it's you know the chair raises a, I think a crucial uh, part of the support mechanism that the health service actually does have to provide. And as we say, I engaged with with the Southern Trust, with the CEO and the chair at, in, the, in regards to the initial outbreak and Craig Alvin to make sure that they brought in additional resources, not just to support the families and also support their staff as well, because this is a very challenging time um, as they manage um, this outbreak, but also the implications of what has happened as well. So I have also asked the, the patient client council if there is a role and remit that they can provide to provide an independent or, or a secondary uh, support mechanism outside the trust, should there be family or staff that want to avail of, of, of a service or of a, of a listening ear actually outside the trust itself. Members, that concludes this end of business, and can I ask members to take their for a moment or two?